My name is Alex Prudhomme. I'm here to talk about Julia Child's memoir, My Life in France, which I co-authored with her. Uh, she was my great aunt, so I knew her very well. I would see her all the time, and she would often say, I'm working on the France book. In December of 2003, I was out visiting her in California, as I usually did around Christmas. And I said, Julia, how's the France book coming? And she said, well, it's not so good. At this point, she was 91 years old, and it was clear that the clock was ticking. And so I said, well, I'm here to help. And this time she said, well, maybe we ought to give it a try. So she pulled open the drawer of her desk, and uh, I was expecting to see a big manuscript there, but what I found instead were a series of neatly organized manila envelopes filled with airmail paper. And it turned out that these were the letters that Paul and Julia had written from Paris and Marseille to my grandparents in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, while they were living in France. For a writer to find these primary source materials sitting there in pristine condition was fa fabulous. I felt like a, a pirate that had stumbled over a, a pile of gold and jewels. And then I had Julia sitting there. At first, it didn't go very well because Julia was genuinely a modest person and she didn't like to talk about herself. So I'd, I'd say, now Julia, uh, tell me about the house you lived in in Paris. And she'd say, oh, it was just a little apartment. Now, now how is your place in Brooklyn? And I found that the key to unlock her was uh, to read little excerpts from the letters, specifically Paul's letters. And so I would read a little excerpt in which he would describe, say, walking along the Seine in Paris, or going up to Montmartre, or going to a wonderful restaurant. And that would unlock Julia, and it would allow her to talk about Paris and Paul, and incidentally about herself, uh, while we were going. And so that was the kind of the, the, the trigger. There were moments when she would go into a sort of trance, and she would start speaking in the present tense, as if she were reliving those moments right there. And people who have older relatives sometimes see this. And I think because these were the favorite years of her life, it gave her great pleasure to re-experience those things in a way. Yes, I do cook a lot, and I use a lot of Julia's recipes. Actually, um, my favorite books of hers are uh, The Way to Cook, which is a big book that is a kind of a compendium of years of work that came out later in her career. It's in color. Uh, it's just a very useful, wonderful book. Um, I love the early books, um, but I also like the book that she did with Jacques Pepin, uh, Julia and Jacques Cooking at Home. It's a wonderful book, and uh, that uh, shows Julia's version of a recipe and Jacques' version. And those of you who have seen uh, their show that they did together, you know they had a kind of a, um, a friendly, competitive, uh, uh, creative tension uh, where he would say, well, you must do it this way, and she'd say, oh, no, I do it that way. And uh, that really comes through on the page, and it's fun to see and to try different things. And, uh, you know, Julia was big on learning technique and really understanding how food works. And then once one does that, then you can freeform and improvise. And I think that's important for any creative endeavor, but uh, it's really fun in cooking. And now um, I love to share that with my kids and my wife and my family. And uh, it's, it's a way of passing Julia's legacy down, I think. Well, one, as anybody who, who's seen Julia knows, she had a sort of idiosyncratic syntax. She liked to use a very evocative language, and she had that wonderful fluttery voice. Um, and I really like that kind of voice in writing. I like people who use words that mean something, but they're not typical words. I tend to not like words that smack of marketing and manipulation. Words like wellness, for me, that's kind of a fake word. I like real language, um, and I like evocative language. And so, you know, my favorite writers tend to be people like Mark Twain or Herman Melville, who have a kind of poetic sensibility. And I think Julia really had that. She loved food, and she loved the French. And um, for a long time, her tutor was her husband Paul, who was really obsessed with language and, and took um, uh, great pains to write even just a simple letter. Uh, I think Julia learned a lot from that, and they both read all the time. Um, and that really comes through in her writing, and I, it, it's, a, it's a style that um, uh, was fun to emulate when I was sort of um, uh, 
putting myself in her voice, uh, she would use words that I wouldn't necessarily use. She would never say, I put the chicken on the table. She'd always say, I plop it. I plop the chicken on the table. And she would massage it with butter. And she would, uh, she talked about exuberant ingredients. Um, these are phrases that I wouldn't necessarily use, but they're wonderfully evocative. She had this wonderful, charismatic, fun-loving, enthusiastic, well-informed, um, personal and prose style. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.